Hi friends, today we will look at how China is strengthening its ties with the West Asia, particularly during the COVID-19 times. See, this is broadly the West Asia, also called as the Middle East. Middle East. It starts from Turkey, then you know the Syria, Lebanon, even the Israel is a part of it. Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Iraq, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, UAE, you know, all the GCC countries, Saudi Arabia, Iran. Of course, Afghanistan is mostly considered as a part of the South Asia. So the remaining countries which you see here fall under the broad region of Western Asia or Middle East. So let us see what China is doing with these countries to deepen its ties. See, as soon as the COVID-19 broke out, initially in China and then as it was spreading throughout the country, throughout the world, USA started the blame game. USA called this as the Chinese virus and many countries supported uh, you know, USA. However, if you observe closely, the West Asian countries mostly remained neutral. They did not blame China for the COVID-19. Similarly, if you see, the oil imported by USA from the West Asian countries have drastically fell down. Particularly in the last decade or so, USA started the fracking technology uh, for the shale gas and also USA is exploring and exploiting its own petroleum due to which its dependency on the Western Asian oil has fell down and this gap has been filled by China. China, if you observe, out of the overall oil imported by China, the petroleum imported by China, 40% of it comes from the Western Asia. So China is an important customer of West Asian countries oil. So West Asia definitely requires China for their economy. So they are maintaining very good relations with China. Similarly, if you see the Belt and Road Initiative of the China, also called as the Silk Route. Actually the Belt, Belt means the, the railway and the roadway constructed by China connecting China to other countries, the, you know, the Eastern Europe, the West Asia, the South Asia, these countries. The road actually means the sea route, sea route between the China to other countries around China. So in this Belt and Road Initiative of China, China is using these railway routes, China is using these railways, these roadways and the ports. China has constructed some ports as a part of BRI infrastructure. So, China is using these things to supply the medical supports to the West Asian countries. For example, the railway connecting China's uh, Shanghai, China's Shanghai to Iran's Tehran. The railway connecting the Shanghai to Tehran presently is carrying the medical supplies required for the Iran to curb the, you know, the uh, COVID-19. Similarly, the ports, if you observe UAE uh, in the Abu Dhabi area, in the Abu Dhabi, a port called Khalifa. The Khalifa port built by China as a part of BRI, it is using to supply to the UAE the essential you know, uh, medical supplies required to uh, face the challenge of COVID-19. So that's why recently the BRI is called by China as a health silk road because this road, this route is used to support the healthcare infrastructure of the West Asian countries. See, also uh, one of the doubts in our mind may be, may be why during the COVID-19, why West Asia is believing mostly in China than in USA. If you observe closely, USA, uh, you can say slightly failed in controlling the COVID-19 because the deaths in USA are too high. Even the spreading in USA is too high. But China successfully is able to control the deaths where according to the media reports or according to the Chinese media reports, China is able to control the spreading of COVID-19 compared to USA. That's why West Asian countries are believing in China. They are mostly trying to take help from the China to control the COVID-19 in their countries, the West Asian countries. In that way also, China is strengthening its ties with the West Asian countries. See, in the initial days when the COVID-19 has spread in the Wuhan, started in the Wuhan, from there, as it spread to another other places of the China, other states of China, in the initial days of COVID-19, 
the West Asian countries actually helped China. For example, if you consider Turkey, Turkey actually manufactured antibacterial suits particularly for China in those days. Similarly, the Saudi Arabia, the Kuwait, you know, the Kuwait, the Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the Qatar and the Kuwait, these countries also have produced the face masks, produced the uh, essential supplies required for China and they exported them to China mostly for uh, free of cost. In that way, in the initial days of COVID-19, the West Asian countries stood with the China. Even if you see the UAE, the Burj Khalifa towers of UAE, there they displayed the flag of China to give the moral support to China that we are there with you. That is the kind of relation West Asian countries had with China even in the initial days of the COVID. Now, let us look at uh, you know the relation with individual country and why that country is important to China and vice versa. For example, consider Iran. You may be knowing that USA is isolating Iran from last five to six years, uh, particularly due to the nuclear reasons. So even USA has withdrawn from the JCPOA agreement between the P5 plus one countries and uh, uh, the Iran. However, as USA is isolating China, or isolating Iran, as USA is isolating Iran, China is embracing Iran. You know, China is considering this opportunity to embrace the Iran. In fact, China recently requested uh, the USA and other countries to ease the sanctions imposed against Iran so that the United Nations and other international organizations, other international organizations can supply the essential medical supplements for the Iran because Iran is the highest affected country of COVID-19 among all the West Asian countries. Even that is one dimension. The other aspect is that China is a major importer of the oil from Iran. As many countries stopped importing oil from Iran, China is continuing it and that's why Iran values China. That's why the initial days when many countries blamed China for spreading the COVID, Corona throughout the world, Iran actually did not agree with it. Iran in fact supported China, Iran stood with China. Even if you look at the BRI angle, even in the, as per the Belt and Road Initiative, China, Iran is an important key area for China in the West Asia to strengthen the BRI initiative of China. Coming to Turkey, as I told you already, uh, Turkey helped uh, China in the initial days of COVID-19 in manufacturing the antibacterial suits, you know, for the paramedics and doctors of the China. See, these days, if you observe closely, uh, Turkey is having tensions you know, with USA and European Union. In fact, Turkey wants to reduce its dependence on NATO. And that is why Turkey is trying to strengthen the relation with China and Russia. In this context, if you observe in this context, China has given a special drug to Turkey recently. Uh, before giving the drug, the Turkey has to keep a patient for almost 14 days in the intensive care, the corona affected patients. However, after the special drug came into Turkey, the intensive care time has reduced from 14 days to just four days, just four days. So we have to see what the special drug is. You know, there is a lot of suspicion against China in this regard. Similarly, if you look at Turkey, Turkey is at a strategic location. As I have shown you earlier, Turkey is a strategic location. See, this is Turkey. Between the Europe, this side is Europe, this side is Asia. So Turkey is exactly between the Europe and Asia. So in that way, for the BRI initiative, Turkey is very important and Turkey is a gateway to the Europe. Also, but there is one, uh, you know, the negative aspect in the Turkey-China relations. That is, in China, there is this Turkey, Turkic language spoken Uyghur Muslim population in China. And China has kept them in the mass detention. And China is mistreating these Uyghur Muslims uh, who are, you know, of Turkic ethnicity. So in this aspect, Turkey is... Uh, uh, trying to amicably solve this problem. That is one tension between uh, Turkey and China. Otherwise, the relation is very good with Turkey and China. And if you consider other countries of West Asia like Iraq, the Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, if you observe these countries are mostly because of the you know, ISIS, because of this, these countries are mostly um, conflict prone, conflict prone. And in these conflict prone areas, China is supplying, in fact, manufacturing the essential medical supplies. That means these countries do not have the capability or potential to manufacture the 
um, medical supplies by themselves. So China is helping them in establishing the companies, the manufacturing units to manufacture the supplies. Like you no, know, to manufacture the ventilators, face masks, test kits, the swabs, the protective gears, etc. In that way, in that way, China is making use of this COVID-19 situation to develop the soft power, the you know diplomatic soft power with the West Asian countries. Now coming to Iraq, Iraq also geopolitically it is an important location. So, uh, specifically, Iraq is between the GCC and the shipping lanes. For example, if you see here, this is Iraq. This is Iraq. No, this is the GCC country, Saudi Arabia, you know, Kuwait, Bahrain, GCC countries. Now, the China's China, you know, uh, through Mediterranean Sea, through Red Sea, you know, through the Persian Gulf, the China comes, the Chinese ships comes and supply essential medical facilities. And they have to go through the Iraq to other countries, you see. In that way, Iraq is at a strategic location between the shipping lanes and the GCC countries. And GCC countries. In that way, Iraq is important to China. That's why, you know, China established the polymerase PCR, polymerase chain reaction laboratory, which actually can multiply the DNA several times. In fact, the throat swab that we take to test for the COVID-19 uh, requires this PCR laboratory and it is established by China in the Baghdad. In that way, China is helping Iraq. Coming to Israel, as you know, Israel is a very close ally of USA. Definitely, it is difficult for China to make inroads into Israel because definitely Israel will look at China with suspicion and also UL, USA mostly will not allow Israel to develop good relation with China. However, friends, China has you know brokered a deal with the Smart Aid. Smart Aid is a healthcare company of Israel. China partnered with this company, healthcare company, in establishing the medical infrastructure in the research and development and science and technology, you know, uh, collaboration. In that way, Israel and China are coming together to tackle this problem of COVID-19. However, definitely USA uh, has good influence on Israel and it's difficult for Israel to fall under the influence of China. Uh, also, one more thing is China strongly opposed the Israel for occupying the Palestinian territory. Even in that aspect also, if you observe, it's difficult for China to uh, you know, get into Israel so quickly. However, China is considering Israel as a bridge to the USA. Now, uh, if you look at West Asia, among the Muslim countries of West Asia, the strongest allies for USA are Saudi Arabia and UAE. So definitely, the eye of China will be towards this, uh, uh, this Saudi Arabia and UAE. So if you observe, with Saudi Arabia, China has made an agreement of $250 million agreement to manufacture 9 million testing kits for COVID-19. And almost, so I think, 6 to 8 large laboratories have been constructed by China in Saudi Arabia with a capacity of testing almost 50,000 uh, COVID uh, people, I mean, 50,000 people can be tested on the same day for COVID-19, for Corona. So in this way, uh, China is utilizing this COVID-19 to become to become a good ally of Saudi Arabia. Even UAE, the United Arab Emirates, you know, the United Arab Emirates, the UAE also if observe. One special aspect of UAE is that among all the West Asian countries, most of the Chinese nationals stay in the UAE. So, if the COVID-19 spreads rapidly in UAE, it will affect the Chinese nationals living in the UAE. Okay, in that way, China wants to support UAE in controlling the COVID-19 spread so that it can save its people, the Chinese people. Even the UAE has taken special measures and special care to save the people who have come from China and staying in the UAE. In that way, you know, the soft power of China is spreading across the West Asian countries. One other aspect that we have to observe in the China-West Asia relation without missing it is definitely the gap created by USA. USA previously is, you know, the global leader, even now is global leader. It has got the hegemony throughout the world. But presently, the China is grappling under its own domestic crisis because of rapid spread of COVID-19 and several deaths. So it is becoming difficult for USA to look out and to help the other countries because it is mostly focusing inwards within the USA domestic crisis. The another aspect is Trump. The Donald Trump's attitude, attitude towards this traditional allies of USA is slightly different from the previous governments of USA. 
That's why many countries, the allies of USA, are slightly afraid whether the USA will continue a good relation with them in the long term. That's why they are trying to develop the relation with China too, so that they can balance this gap. And this gap created by USA internationally has been filled by China gradually. How? For example, particularly the non-interference policy of the China is liked by most of the countries. As you know, China's non-interference policy says that you should never interfere in the domestic politics of the country, whereas USA rightly interferes. China do not interfere according to its old policy. However, now it's different. For example, recently if you see in some of the African countries, China wants to protect its investments. So it has deployed some military. So this non-interference policy is not really followed. However, broadly if you observe, the non-interference policy of China is liked by the West Asian countries. That's why, you know, they are most accepting China as their partner, an ally, economic partner. Also, in the conflict-prone areas that I have shown previously, the Lebanon, the Syria, the Iraq, in these conflict-prone areas, whatever, you know, help China is doing to these countries, China is able to publicize that, publicize that effectively using its Arabic language outlets within the China's Chinese media. There is there are some outlets using the Arabic language. China is using these uh, Arabic language outlets effectively to you know to uh, develop that soft power among all these West Asian countries. China is in fact trying to improve its image as a global power. Uh, as we know that mostly we all do not consider China as a responsible global player. So China wants to recast its image as a responsible global player. So friends, finally conclusion. So do you think China can replace USA uh, because of this COVID-19? Can China replace USA in the West Asia? I think not really. Though I have talked for last 15-20 minutes, I don't think uh, China can really replace USA just because of this COVID-19 because there is still a lot of suspicion against, uh, suspicion against China. Even now, uh, several countries think that China is mostly self-centered. And uh, uh, in that way, they look at India in a better light. They look at India as a country which, along with trying for its self-development, also uh, extends helping hand to, the, to other countries. However, India should still uh, learn some lessons from China in how to uh, make inroads and how to develop deep ties with the Western Asian countries. Friends, thank you.